If you've come across a cyclonic vacuum cleaner before, chances are that you know the name Dyson. Dyson is a revolutionary engineering company that was founded in the 1980s. Dyson is called revolutionary because the company has a reputation for building products that solve everyday problems in different and better ways. Take the Dyson vacuum cleaners, for example, that don't require regular dust bag replacements, or the Dyson Air Multiplier, which is a fan that has no external blades. This reputation has translated into major sales for the company. Since its launch in the mid-1980s, the company has grown into one of the best-known brands in the United States and the UK. The company has also maintained an annual revenue of at least one billion pounds for the last 10 years. Like most companies of its kind, Dyson had a rough time in the beginning. First of all, James Dyson failed over 5,000 times before he perfected the cyclonic vacuum design. Plus, cash for launching the project was hard to come by. Even when the cash came and the product was launched, most manufacturers in the UK rejected it. They feared that it would destabilize the 100 million pound market for disposable vacuum bags, and so decided not to use Dyson's design. It would take 10 years after a successful launch in Japan before Dyson would become a household name in the UK. By the turn of the 21st century, Dyson had become a global player that was now available in over 65 countries. But how did Dyson get here? That's the aim of today's video. We'll look at how a young boy who lost his father while he was still growing will go on to build a multi-billion dollar company. James Dyson was born on the 2nd of May, 1947, in the small town of Cromer, Norfolk. He was named after his granddad. He attended the Grisham School in Holt, Norfolk from 1956 to 1965. That same year, tragedy struck the young James Dyson. His father passed away after battling prostate cancer. He then joined the Byam Shaw School of Art for one year before moving on to the Royal College of Art in 1966. He remained there for the next three years. While at the Royal College of Art, James met a structural engineer named Anthony Hunt, who inspired him to join engineering. That same year, Dyson switched to industrial design. As a child, he enjoyed long distance running a lot. He even credits running with teaching him a lot about determination. In 1968, he married the love of his life, a woman named Deidre Hindmarsh, and both of them went on to have three kids, two boys and one girl. Dyson's first major invention was released in 1978. It all started when James Dyson was renovating his house. He noticed that the wheelbarrow he was using had several problems. It was prone to punctures, and it was also unstable. Like a true engineer, he began wondering on how to make it work better. That was the birth of the invention known as the ball barrow. Like anything of real value, James went through a series of failures in his bid to make the ball barrow. The ball barrow was designed with a molded plastic hopper on a steel frame and a spherical plastic wheel. This gave the ball more maneuverability. The ball barrow also had a larger surface area compared to the traditional wheelbarrow, and that was what made the ball barrow better to use in soft soil. The patent for the ball barrel was owned by the investors who had funded the company. This became a problem as the company began to face some financial issues along the way. The company began to need cash more often and, as a result, Dyson's stake in the company gradually reduced. Soon enough, the investors kicked him out of the company and sold it. Many years later, Dyson maintains that his failure to retain control of his invention and getting kicked out was some of the biggest business mistakes he ever made. James Dyson didn't let the disappointment of being kicked out of his company weigh him down. Rather, he focused on the next problem he could solve, vacuum cleaners. Dyson was in his mid-30s when he became fed up with his Hoover Jr. vacuum cleaner. He noticed that the small dust bag pores kept getting clogged with dust. This significantly reduced the suction. Dyson was now thinking of building a vacuum cleaner using cyclonic separation, an idea that was inspired by cyclone technology used in sawmills. As an engineer, Dyson understood that to build something, one needed hours of patience and many failed tries before arriving at something that worked. This was exactly the same with the vacuum cleaner he had designed. Dyson got to work, and after 5,126 attempts over five years, he finally got it right. Called the G-Force Cleaner, Dyson launched his novel vacuum cleaner in 1983. He was partly supported by his wife's art school salary. Sadly, all that hard work wasn't enough to make his product an immediate hit in the UK. Many distributors turned down the offer to sell his product over fears that it would destabilize the replacement dust bags market in the UK. Undaunted by the setback, 
Dyson took his product far east to Japan, where he launched G-Force cleaners through catalog sales. The first models were produced in bright pink. They sold for $2,000 a piece. The G-Force became a hit product in Japan. Only eight years after its first ever launch, the G-Force cleaner won the International Design Fair Prize in Japan. Soon, Dyson was tired of offering his product to manufacturers, so he opened his own manufacturing company. Two years after winning the International Design Fair Prize in Japan, Dyson opened a research center and factory in Malmesbury, Wiltshire. Ten years after the launch of his vacuum cleaner, the UK was now ready for Dyson vacuums. A TV ad stressed the fact that using Dyson vacuum cleaners would cut out the need for regular buying of replacement bags. The ad generated a lot of interest in Dyson vacuum cleaners, and soon almost every household was ordering one for themselves. Dyson then released the Dyson Dual Cyclone with the slogan, Say Goodbye to the Bag. Almost immediately, the Dyson Dual Cyclone became the fastest selling vacuum cleaner in the country. At some point, it was outselling companies that had earlier refused to license the idea. Cyclonic vacuum cleaners had become the main thing on the market, and so many competitors wanted to jump on the train. One of such competitors included Hoover UK. Sadly for Hoover UK, they were sued to the tune of 5 million for infringing on patent rights belonging to Dyson. Dyson had now become a household name in the UK. Soon, he switched his focus to international expansion. To do that, he needed to expand his manufacturing plant. Sadly, as Dyson recalled, he couldn't expand in the UK because of limited space among other economic reasons. To solve the problem, he relocated his plant to Malaysia. This drew concerns from many people, including the government and the public, who were worried by the 800 employees that were now left redundant by the company's decision. Dyson promised all those who were concerned that the company would make up for any loss that would result in its decision to relocate. That it did by investing heavily in research and development in England. The company's headquarters also remained in England. Now that the company had expanded its manufacturing capabilities, it was time to add new products to their offerings. One of the first of its new product offerings was the washing machine called the Contra Rotator, which contained two rotating drums moving in the opposite direction. Sadly, the product did not find a place among the hearts of Dyson's customers, and its production ceased in 2005. Dyson also manufactured, through its engineer Derek Phillips, a water sculpture that had optical illusions that made the water appear to rise to the top of four ramps before flowing back down to the bottom in cycles. The water sculpture was named Wrong Garden, and it was on display at the Chelsea Flower Show in 2003. By 2006, James Dyson had another breakthrough invention in the object of the Dyson Airblade, which was a fast hand dryer. The hand dryer uses a thin layer of moving air to remove water rather than trying to evaporate it using heat like traditional hand dryers. The advantage of the Dyson Airblade is that it uses far less energy than other hand dryers. Three years later, Dyson was set to revolutionize technology again. This time, the company released a fan that had no external blades called the Air Multiplier. Dyson also released a hair dryer called the Dyson Supersonic, which had a smaller size and also produced less noise. Beyond groundbreaking inventions, Dyson is a firm supporter of education. He has donated millions of pounds to different academic institutions, including an eight million pound donation for the building of a technology hub. He also built the Dyson Institute of Engineering and Technology in 2017 and the school became the first private university with the power to award degrees in 2021. He is also a firm supporter of research and development who has invested over two billion pounds in emerging technologies like electric cars. The story of James Dyson and how he built a revolutionary engineering company is a very interesting one, especially because James Dyson isn't your average entrepreneur. Even though he's often called a marketing wizard, James is mostly driven by a desire to solve problems in a different and better way. In his own words, In a way, problem solving is a disease. You, you want to do it, and although each one's a headache, it's there to be solved. It's a mountain to climb. Mountaineers have that disease, and we have that. We were a group of engineers starting to want to make a different type of product with better technology, and we've carried on like that. Things are too heavy, things are too polluting, things don't perform as well as they should, things don't last as long as they should. There are just hundreds of problems in every product. What we're doing is trying to do something different and better. 
If you always do what you know is going to work, then OK, you'll have less failure. But you'll never make a substantive change or a breakthrough. What we're trying to do every day is to make better technology and design and develop better performing products. And I think we've gathered around us a group of people who want to do that. If you want to hear more inspiring stories about people whose drive and determination led them to change the world, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and leave a like and a comment down below.